Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I have not talked on this topic in a long time, but it's a very, very important topic, and it's about to be really important. So we're going to talk about our vision to find oil in Israel. Now, I have to start with a very big disclaimer. Nothing I'm saying in this presentation should be deemed as an offering of security or solicitation for you to buy a security. Any such thing can only be done through legal prospectus, such as a private placement document approved by the company, and we are not offering stock in prophetic oil at this time. My statements and my personal views and opinion are not a legal representation or promise. Any legal relationship would include a business relationship or investment will only be done through proper legal documents. We cannot guarantee we'll ever get the money drilled for or hit oil in Israel. Now, here's the story. In 1982, a part-time pastor, full-time oil man by the name of Hayseed Stevens out of Willow Park, Texas, which is just west of the DFW area, was invited by a group of other oil men to go to Israel to meet Menachem Begin. While he was there, he said that the Lord spoke to his heart and said the world's largest oil field is located at the southwest end of the Dead Sea. He said, well, if that's true, then it's got to be in the Bible. So he came back. He found 17 scriptures in the Bible that say massive. In the last days, massive amounts of oil will be found in Israel. Now, since then, I've done some research, and I found 65 of them. Prophecy teachers, you might well expect. Then, October 31, 1990, a prophet was given to Demetri Dudman by the angel, and the next morning, Michael Boldea called and said, the angel visited Dimitri last night, and he has a word for you. And he said, tell Stan if he will do what God has laid on his heart to do, God will bless him more than he ever thought possible. Well, I have thought that happened a long time ago. But it may very well be talking about oil in Israel. 1995, Hayseed started an oil company to gather the funds to drill for oil. May 5th, 1997, Dimitri Dudeman died. I fasted for seven days. I was very upset. May 11th, 1997... I woke up out of on the sixth day of fasting and, and, and praying, woke up and into a vision of me having organized a meeting in a sports stadium, and thousands upon thousands of people were there to hear Jesus, and I saw the people running out of the sports stadium down onto the gridiron to give their heart to Jesus. Big tears in their eyes. 1998, Prophecy Club put Payseed on a 10-city speaking tour, which blew financial life into his vision, find oil in Israel. But October 26, 2001, Leslie heard the audible voice speak and was shown a map of where the oil is located in Israel. I could not wait to get back to tell Hayseed about this, but I never got to tell him because before I could tell him, he was dead. December 16, 2002, in the night, she heard a voice saying, no, excuse me. And then I, I heard a voice saying, I'm giving you part of the harvest from the seed sown by Billy Graham. Now, let me tell you that story. So as I was falling off to sleep that night, I said, uh, under my breath, didn't want to wake up Leslie. I said, I just wanted to say that I love you more than I love my wife, my family, my children, more than life itself, more than the breath of my lungs and the beat of my heart. And I fell asleep. I didn't think anything special was going to happen, but I got surprised. So I heard the voice say, I'm giving you part of the harvest from the seeds sown by Billy Graham. Then a two foot by two foot piece of paper appeared up and to my right. And a sword, a two handed, uh, held at two hands, one, one, one handled sword. And I could spin around in any direction. It was very sharp and I took it and I cut off about a third of that paper. As I cut off the paper and it turned down, it turned to like a waterfall, meaning I think that these souls are going to come in very quickly. And in that, I cut off about a third of the paper. I think he's saying, I'm giving you about the third the number of souls that he gave Billy Graham. Well, what does that mean? Well, Billy Graham's probably one of the greatest soul winners of our time. So I take that to mean lots and lots of souls. Hang on. This can make sense in a minute. Then May 15, 2003, failed to, Hayseed fell dead of a heart attack, and the vision fell on hard times. Now, May 20th of 2003, I had a dream. 
An oil man and friend of mine had a reputation for fighting oil and an intercessor from our congregation and myself when a sport utility vehicle driving around in Israel looking for another, 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 meaning we had already hit oil once, another place to drill an oil well. I was driving with this real big stake. It was like about 9 by 12, okay, and in my lap. And uh, as we were driving along, every once in a while I would stop and cut me off a piece of the stake and eat it. And I think that that means that that I'll be bringing the finances to drill the well, obviously to God, okay, but it would be through my hands. And the entire time we were looking for this oil and another place to drill, we had intercessors praying for us. And that's a very, very important key. Then 2006, I asked the Lord, I'm of a mind to just walk away from all this oil stuff. I was just very frustrated because 2006 and nothing had happened. I thought that Hayseed had already been over there. I thought somebody somehow had already found oil in Israel. Hayseed was now dead and nothing had happened. So I just said, Lord, I'm a mind just walk away from all this oil stuff. But if you want me to stay involved, give me a dream showing me what it's like to be on a gusher when it comes in. Now, let me say something. So I grew up, Leslie and I both did, in Odessa, Texas. Now, that might not mean anything to you, but that's in the heart of the oil country, West Texas. I grew up with a pump jack literally across the street from my bedroom window. Mm. Click, click. Mm. Click, click. <laughs> I can still remember, still hear it in my head today. I grew up in an oil company, in country. My friends I went to high school with, their dads, all in the oil business. There was signs on people's cars that said, oil feeds my family and pays my taxes. That's what they did. In Odessa, they were the people that worked on the oil wells, and in Midland was where the people that owned the oil wells lived. But I never wanted to have anything to do with the oil business, uh, I can recall driving down the street and this terrible smell would come into the car because you just drove through some sour gas coming out of one of the wells around there. I had a very good friend that was the high school quarterback, died from H2S, hydrogen sulfide gas, one whiff of it, and you are dead. So, here's what happened. I had this dream that night, just as I'd asked, I said, Lord, if you want me to stay involved with in this oil stuff, show me what it's like to be at an oil well when it comes in. Now, I've never, even to this day, I have never been on an oil rig. I've never been on a platform, never had anything to do with oil. And you say, really? You, and God's going to use you to find oil in Israel? I believe so, but I'll explain. So anyway, that night, here was the dream. I was standing on an oil platform. There was this, you know, the pipe going up. And about that time, I heard right there behind me a voice saying, There she blows, like in the Moby Dick movie. Okay. And about that time, this, this pipe, about, about this big around in front of me, just started spewing a trend, air at a tremendous pressure. It was like an ear splitting. Really, really loud. I mean, I covered my ears just like this. It went on for a couple of minutes, and then finally, and then just nothing. And then this brown sugar-colored oil started coming up out of it. So that answered my question. Okay, I guess I'm supposed to stay involved with this oil stuff, whatever it is. Again, that's 2006. Now, November 7, 2007, Hayseed's former attorney called me and asked me if I'd be willing to start a new oil corporation to continue the vision to find oil in Israel. My exact response was, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> uh, my plate's full. I got plenty to do. I mean, you know, I don't know anything about oil anyway. Well, we don't need you to know anything about oil. We need you to cast the vision talking about how Bible prophecy says oil is in Israel. Oh, well, that I can do. I said, but, you know, I, 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 I'll pray about it, but probably not. So my get me out of it prayer that night was, Lord, as you know, I don't have any extra $5,000 laying around to give that attorney to start some oil corporation. So if you want me to do this, 
send the money. I thought that was a great prayer. I got me out of it <laughs> real slick. It, well, the next morning, I'd forgotten all about it. The office called. Lady wants to talk to you about oil in Israel. Why these people keep calling me? I don't have anything to do with oil in Israel. Well, she's been a faithful $50 a month partaker now for over 10 years. I think you ought to call her. Well, <laughs> I was going to call her, but now I felt obligated. So I called her. Thank you for calling. The reason I ask you to call is because two nights ago, now this is two nights ago, two nights ago, God woke me up in the middle of the night and told me to give you $30,000 to continue the vision to find oil in Israel. My exact response was, well, fine. <laughs> she sent the check. We cashed it. And on January 2 of 2008, we started Prophetic Oil Company. I didn't know nothing about it, but I was about to learn a whole bunch of stuff. On to the next one. That's January 1. I looked it up. It's actually January 2. July 21 of 2008, I heard the voice say, Stan, I will give you the money to drill the well in Israel. So here's the story on that. Um, I, when, when we got this prophetic oil started, I set up an 18-city speaking tour from Beaumont all the way up into Minneapolis. And July the 21st, after I spoke in Amarillo that night, I prayed, as I, of course, do every night. And I said, Lord, I hope you please what we're doing because it's not going so good. We're spending $3,500 per city, not many people showing up, not many people getting saved, not many people interested in oil in Israel. So I hope you're pleased with me. And that night, he spoke to me. I mean, I heard audible words. And they said, Stan, I will give you the money to drill the well in Israel. And it woke me up, and I answered out loud. I said, the oil well in Israel? <laughs> but there was no answer. It's like, son, that's all I'm going to say. Now, every time I say that, I have to give a disclaimer. That is, we cannot guarantee we're ever going to get the money drilled for or hit oil in Israel. May 13th, 2012, I had a dream. I was in Israel, and an earthquake released oil into the dry oil field, and I filed papers claiming it. Here's the, the dream. I remember it specifically. So, again, I grew up in West Texas, and in my days of playing, there were times where me and my buddy would go out and we would play on an empty pump jack. Now, this is where they used to have a pump jack, but it's just a big concrete pillar. It's about four foot wide by about oh, three foot tall and about 12 foot long. And they put the pump jack on that big concrete thing. And I can recall, recall playing on that. I can recall being around, a matter of fact, a buddy of mine actually climbed up on one of the oil wells and was riding it like a horse. I mean, I've heard of people, see that those big things that go around, they don't stop. I've also heard of people getting caught in those and breaking legs and killing people. Yeah, and I didn't want to, I didn't get on it. But anyway, the point is, is that's where I was. I was at an abandoned oil well. I can remember what the dirt looked like. I can remember the smell of crude oil around it. But in this dream, all of a sudden, I jumped up on this big, giant, four-foot by three-foot chunk of concrete, and I pointed down into the earth, and I said, there is oil coming out of there. And about that time, the earth started shaking like this. And then all of a sudden, psh, about 8 to 12, apparently previously dry holes went, psh, and then fell back silent. I turned to my friend behind me and I said, hey, an earth just, earthquake just caused oil to flow into this formation. Quick, we got to get the papers. We got to go and file to, to get the lease on this before somebody finds out now oil is in this dry formation. And the dream ended. Now, one of the things I want to do is when we get the money, because right now I can't do anything till we get money, because there's been so many Christians go to Israel and say, we want to drill for oil, and they didn't have any money, that now Israel, I hear, I don't know, I didn't have, haven't heard this from Israel, but I hear that unless you have a big pile of money, they won't even talk to you about drilling wells in Israel. So there's no sense in even contacting them until I have the money. But again, God said he's going to give me the money. July 20th of 2014, I had a dream of me speaking in a sports stadium, getting the people to worship Jesus. 
And I've kind of told that lots, and, and I'm going to move on. So let me tell you my plan. I believe that God has showed me the one single verse that tells me where oil is located. But of course, you never understand. I could read the reverse verse to you right now. I'm not going to do it because <laughs> taking a chance somebody might figure it out. But uh, you wouldn't understand it unless you understood, A, what that verse is saying in the Hebrew. I've looked it up. And also, you got to have the right map. And there's about 30 maps of Israel, and that's all I'm going to say about that. you got to have the right map, or you're drilling in the wrong place. Leslie also had a dream showing the location, and I think I'll cover that here in a minute. And also, there's five of the verses that tell how deep to drill, because there's only two reasons why oil has not been found in Israel already. And that is, either you're drilling in the wrong place, or you're not drilling deep enough. The Bible says that the oil is deep. Now, 40,000 feet is the deepest well ever drilled in the world. That was drilled by the Russians back in the 70s to 40,000 feet. What I want to do is get a rig that is about 22 stories tall, four blocks at the base. It takes 180 18-wheel trucks to move it. Takes about six months to build each one, two months to move it to Israel, had a month, about a month to erect it, another six to nine months to drill to the depth that I want to drill to. Now, what I wanted to, uh, okay, I, I know that this sounds grandiose. I know, I understand that. And you may be thinking, boy, you have a hole in your head. You better watch it when you walk in the wind because you will whistle. But God does things like this. And I'm convinced that all of this is going to happen. That is, as long as I can keep my heart clean and do what he wants me to do. I also want to get the rig powerful enough to pull out a stuck pipe. And maybe that's all I want to say on that. Now, another big question is, why hasn't God already released the oil to Israel? The answer is found in Psalm 81. 13 to 16 says, Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and of the honey out of the rock, should I have satisfied thee. You see, ah, let me reach over here. I had this on my desk. One of these is honey. One of these is yellow-colored crude oil. You can tell the difference because the honey is very thick. But the crude oil, it's very, very light viscosity. You gotta... There you go. Got a little bit of a flashlight under it. So that's the yellow-colored crude oil. And this is a little bit of a sugar in the honey. Now, the highest quality crude oil in the world is honey. We believe it says, when Exodus 3 8 says, get you up, talking to Moses, get you up and send you in land that flows with milk and honey. We believe that the milk is actually gas. A man by the name of Andy Sorrell drilled a series of shallow wells looking for natural gas in Israel back in 1973. He got a light showing of natural gas, and he said it came out of sand as white as table salt. He also drilled the deepest well in Israel, which I have written down here, to 21,427 feet. And he got yellow-colored crude oil, but they dropped a string of pipe down the well. Now, 221,000 feet, that's like four miles, okay? So try to imagine a string of pipe 300 feet long, how much that weighs, falling for four miles. By the time it hit the bottom of the oil well, it stuck. And they fished and fished and fished. It ran out of money. They couldn't get it out. So they had a man in the, uh, the well. Meaning, there's yellow-colored crude oil under Israel. Now let me give you some scriptures that back this up. This is the prophecy to Jacob and his 12 sons. Gather yourselves together, and I will show you what would befall you in the last days. So he's to Asher. He says, your bread, sh your bread shall be fat. Okay, it's not talking about fat on an animal. The word there, I believe, as I recall, is mashman, and it means crude oil. 
Joseph is a fruitful bough by a well. And I believe that's saying that Joseph, one of the 12 tribes, will be wealth, wealthy because of what comes from a well. Then Genesis 25, 49 and 25 says, Blessings of the deep that lieth under, that's deep. Blessings be on the crown of the head of Joseph. So Joseph is going to have oil. Then Genesis 27, 28, God give thee the fatness, that means crude oil, of the earth, that people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. And why do they bow down? Because Israel is going to be given massive amounts of oil. That dwelling should be the fatness of the earth, moving on. Asher his bread should be fat and royal dainties. Moses let Asher dip his foot in oil. And that oil is not olive oil, that is crude oil. Moses, Joseph is a fruitful bow, bow by a well. Blessings on the credit of the head of Joseph. Precious things of the earth and the fullness thereof shall befall you in the last days at your latter end. And the valley of Sedim, or Sodom and Gomorrah, was full of slime pits and oil. And then Exodus 3, 8, this is where God's talking to Moses. Get you up, I'm sending you into a good land flowing with milk and honey. Deuteronomy 32, 13, I made him to ride on the high places. It doesn't mean Israel is going to live on the top of a mountain range. It means that Israel is going to be the wealthiest, strongest nation on the earth. Ride on the high places of the earth. He may eat the increase of the fields. We believe it's talking about oil fields because nothing grown on the ground in Israel is going to make Israel the greatest nation on earth. But oil, oil will. And made him to suck honey out of the rock. Well, the highest quality honey is called Bonny Light. It comes out of Nigeria. This particular yellow oil came from Sprayberry, Texas. But it comes out of flint rock. So when it says, eat the increase of the oil fields, made him to suck honey out of the rock. Well, bees don't build hives and rocks. I'm not talking about bee honey. It's talking about yellow colored crude oil. Honey out of the flint rock. Oil comes from flint rock. He should have fed them with honey out of the rock, should I have satisfied thee. I will bring again thy captivity. Now, that word captivity doesn't mean jail or prison. It means wealth. Gathering the wealth like he gathered in the days of Pharaoh. Captivity of Judah shall return and build them as at the first, meaning that Israel will become the wealthiest time in her existence, even over the days of Solomon. Joy, Jeremiah 33, 9. This is one of the big ones. Joy. It'll be a joy to me, a praise and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear of all of the good that I do to Israel. And they shall fear and tremble for all of the goodness and for all the prosperity that I give unto Israel. Sodom and daughters return to the former estate of wealth. Jeremiah 33, 11, I will cause the return of the wealth of the land. I will perform that good, perform that good thing which I have promised, talking about, to Moses. Get you up and send you into a land filled with milk and honey. I will cause their captivity or their wealth to return. I will bring again the captivity or wealth of Sodom and Samaria. Sodom and her daughters shall return to their former estate. God give thee the fatness of the earth. That's wealth. That's crude oil. That dwelling should be the fatness of the earth. But Jeshurun waxed fat and waxen fat. All this talking about crude oil. Massive amounts of crude oil. Israel oil discovery may drive the wells of Arabs. Ezekiel 30, 36, 69. Prophesy concerning the land of Israel and say, Shoot forth your branches, yield your fruit, Israel. I will turn unto you. Now, Hayseed thought that when it said turn unto you, it's talking about that. Well, let me back up. Hayseed said he did some research into the DNA of the oil in the Middle East. And whether it's Russia, Syria, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, all of that oil in the Middle East all has the same DNA. That means it all has the same source. Now, contrary to what some people want to tell you, it is not created from pre-flood plants and animals. It's actually created down lower than we can even drill, somewhere in the ballpark of 25 miles down, they estimate. And it's created from the products in the earth and also the rotation of the earth, and it is continually created. What he believed is that the source oil for the 
the, the, the nations in the Middle East all come from the southwest end of the Dead Sea. It comes from a very, very deep place there. And he thought that when we began to pump the oil out of the southwest end of the Dead Sea, or Israel, it's going to begin to dry the wells of the Arabs. Now, Ezekiel 38, 8 says that Israel will be dwelling safely, and I will put a hook in the jaw of the Russians. We believe the hook, and by the way, what Leslie saw is where the oil is located. It's in the shape of a hook, like a fish hook. So we believe the hook that God is going to put in the jaw of the Russians to bring them down is when Israel hits oil, it'll begin to dry the wells of all of the nations of the Middle East, including Russia. Russia doesn't want to come. Even Dimitri, the angel spoke to Dimitri that, that God will make them come down. To that is not that they want to, but God makes them. God makes them come down because they ran out of oil and Israel has the oil. Ezekiel 36.10 and I will multiply men upon you. The city shall be inhabited and the waste shall be builded. I will settle you after your old estate. Some will do better to you than at your beginnings. Meaning, you ain't seen nothing yet for how big and how wealthy Israel is about to be. I have given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river of Euphrates. Where is the oil? <laughs> well, since 1953, and this was information as of about eight years ago. I haven't updated it. But as of about eight years ago, since 1953, 503 oil wells, holes, have been drilled uh, looking for oil. Seven on land are producing. And Joseph said, Blessed be the land and the deep that coucheth beneath. Moses was told, Blessings of the deep that lieth under, treasures of darkness and hidden, uh, and, and hidden riches of secret places. Now, you won't find this map any place else. I paid to have this map. Every one of those little square dots is an oil well that has been drilled in Israel. In other words, 503 wells since 1953, only two, two is producing gas, gas only seven producing oil, and the ones that are producing oil are little bitty dribbling things like 50 barrels a day, because that ain't nothing. That's not nothing to produce and provide oil for Israel and for the rest of the world. You remember the deep water horizon? Remember it was pressurized at 20,000 PSI? I think when we hit it, it'll be high pressure oil. 5,000, 10,000, 15, I don't know, maybe even 20,000 PSI. And one well, they say the deep water horizon, had they been able to bring that well in, could have provided all of the oil, one well, all of the oil that America would ever need for 100 years. One well. Suck of the abundance of the seas, treasures hidden in the sand. Of course, they've already found natural gas out in the Mediterranean. The abundance of the seas shall be converted to thee. That's talking about the oil found in the seas. Let me conclude with this. Um, April 15, 2002, Leslie had a dream. Now, you've heard the summarized version of this many times, but you probably haven't heard the entire dream until now. So I'm going to read the whole thing. Leslie said, I dreamt that I saw Mary Jean Stevens, that would be Hayseed Stevens' wife, at a meeting. Mary Jean is Hayseed Stevens' wife. Hayseed is the man that God told the largest oil field in the world is located at the southwest end of the Dead Sea. While we were ministering, Mary Jean got a call from Hayseed. He said, Mary Jean, you need to get home. War is about to break out here in Israel. Now, what does that mean? Okay, Hayseed is already home. Is this saying that Mary Jean is soon to go home? I don't know if she's still alive or not. I don't know. But it does say war is about to break out here in Israel. What just happened October the 7th? There was war broke out in Israel. Is this saying that this is a sign that we're getting close to the massive discovery of oil in Israel? I think so. She told me what Hayseed said, and they left to go home. That night after the meeting, I saw myself sleeping. I had a dream within a dream. I saw a news report on television that announced that Israel had given the Palestinians a state. I heard the Lord say, you must tell everyone that oil is going to come forth soon. It will cause the Jewish people to fight back for their land. There were about eight of us that were discussing my dream. We needed to find a place to talk. The man told us to follow him. Everyone was eager to find out more about this dream. We all walked through what appeared to be an airport waiting area. 
As I walked through, I noticed a lot of Jewish people. I could tell by the way they were talking and visiting. As I was passing by one woman, now this is important, I noticed she was reading a small newspaper like the Jerusalem Post. So I suspect these new newspaper headlines that Leslie has been given, the newspaper they might be appearing in would be the Jerusalem Post. So let's put it this way. When these things start happening, Jerusalem Post can be the first place I check. I was drawn to what she was saying. I heard her say with an accent, Arafat is in the hospital. She didn't say why. However, she was happy to hear he was in the hospital. Now, okay, if you look at the date here, this is 2002. In 2002, Arafat was not allowed outside of his compound, much less prophesying that he was going to die in a hospital. So it was a very big prophecy. Sent it out to all of our supporters, put it on all the radio and the TV we were on at the time. However, she is happy to hear he was in the hospital. I was told Arafat would die in the hospital. And he did, about two years later. We made our way through the crowd into a small room used for an office. Inside this small room was a woman already sitting there. The woman? That would be the church. See, the church can't hear things about the end times. That's what it's about to say. She was an older woman, the church, who would not get up to let us meet privately. However, as we began to talk and visit, she would say, huh? Huh? We finally decided she just couldn't hear very well, so we just let her sit there and went on with our meeting. True. The church, I mean, right on this stuff right here. Church can't hear it. Have I been invited to speak at a lot of churches talking about oil in Israel or Bible prophecy? No, I haven't. They can't hear this sort of stuff. We shut the small sliding door behind us, and the man we followed into the room said, Don't worry about the people outside in the waiting room. Even if they can't hear us, they will not understand and think what we're saying is foolishness anyway. We have so much more information than they do, and a deeper understanding of what's really going on, they will not pay us any attention. Isn't that true? Once inside, this man with high connections in Israel said, All right, Leslie, tell me your dream. I told him that Israel will give the Palestinians a state, but it would be a temporary arrangement to give the Jews enough time to regroup and get their armed forces prepared. I told him that oil will come forth quickly. The discovery of large amounts of oil will make all the Jewish people willing to fight for the land. Then Israel and America will go against most of the rest of the Arab world, and it will lead to a major war, almost like the whole world will get involved in this war. Did she just say that oil is going to draw the Russians down to attack Israel for Armageddon? Uh, certainly was a hint. It'll include many countries. Now, this would confirm April 15, 2001, April, uh, April was not allowed outside his compound, but on 11 11 he died in the hospital, just as Leslie was told. See, Israel is the best land on earth. Ezekiel 26 says, which is the glory of all lands. 2015 says, which is the glory of all lands. If you want to know more about this, I've made these three DVDs. You can order them from Prophecy Club, or you can watch them instantly at watchprophecyclub.com. Let me talk about our three sponsors briefly. First, if you want to get gold or silver, we're going to send you to 800-200-GOLD or prophecyclubgold.com, prophecyclubgold.com. Second, if you want to get long-term emergency food, the only place I would send you to is josephskitchen.com. It is what I believe is God's long-term storage food. As you recall, Pharaoh and Joseph, what fed the world for seven years was wheat. Most of your long-term storage places, nine to $10,000 to feed one person for one year, Joseph's Kitchen can show you how to do it for about $1,000, one person, one year. And EMP Shield. If you want your car to start, if you want your computers to start after some kind of nuclear event, that's the device to get. And if you go to empshield.com and use the promo code PROPHECY, get your $50 discount and help your prophecy club.